Welcome into K-State Online. Mason Voth, Drew Galloway here with you as we get ready for the Cats and Sooners on Tuesday night in Manhattan. 7 o'clock tip-off for K-State and OU. Two teams in desperation mode after 0-2 weeks last week. Different circumstances for both. K-State went on the road to probably the two best teams in the Big 12 as of now, Houston and Iowa State, and they came close in one of those games against Iowa State. The other was horrendous. Oklahoma, much different story. They were at home against Texas, who hadn't really looked like they had the potential to blow out anybody all year, and Texas won comfortably in the Lloyd Noble Center. Then over the weekend, a heartbreaker against Texas Tech. They got down early and then battled their way back, took the lead, and they still lost to the Red Raiders. And so Oklahoma, who got off to a hot start this year, got a lot of love, them and BYU both, probably more than they deserved. They are now starting to look around like, hey, uh, things might get pretty uncomfortable for us come Selection Sunday if we don't pick up our play. So these are two teams that definitely need a win, and both sides are probably telling themselves right now, if we're an NCAA tournament team, these are the games we have to win. So from your perspective, Drew, what is it that is going to help one of these teams get over the top on Tuesday night? I honestly think that it might come down to K-State playing this game at home that kind of puts them over the top because this is desperation mode for both teams, but you have to like the home team as a desperate team because role players play a little bit better at home. You have the home crowd. Big 12 teams seem to always struggle when uh, the game is on the road. So you have to like where K-State stands, even though Oklahoma will still be, I believe they're number 20 or 23 in the latest AP poll that just dropped. Uh, But I said uh, going into it, and now I I see the Ken Palm projected score. I said K-State should probably be favored in this game. Like this is a game where, Oklahoma doesn't really shoot that well from three in conference play. They don't force a lot of turnovers. They don't rebound particularly well on the offensive end. These are matchups where K-State typically wins the game where, you know, last week you play Iowa State and Houston. And what what do they do, Mason? They rebound well Mm -hmm. and they turn you over and they don't turn it over. And that's not really a recipe for success for K-State as of recent, especially when you go on the road, because, I mean, that's that's half the battle is where the game is played in this league. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. I mean, we talked about it yesterday on the Sunday show, but Oklahoma is not very good at what K-State struggles at, which is a benefit. And that's not to say that you know K-State's going to be perfect there because if you struggle at something, you can make anybody look good at it. But it's not just – you can't look at this game and just go, this is a bad matchup for K-State. This is a good matchup for K-State, at least in terms of what they might be able to accomplish. And you, you look at what Oklahoma has done throughout really their entire season. I mean, they got off to a they got off to a good start this year. There's no doubt about that. They only lost one non-conference game. It was to North Carolina, who's been a top-five team all season. And everything else, they played some power five, power six teams, but you know you can debate the merits of what those teams are as we've come to know them. Uh, Their best win, really, outside of that home game against Iowa State that they got to to start Big 12 play, it was Providence, who K-State also beat. Now, the Sooners blew Providence out, but – OU, yeah. I think, is a team that we, we've we started to kind of figure out, hey, they can get hot. They got some guys that can play above a certain level, but um, this, this shouldn't be anything that K-State fears. This is just similar to so many other games that we've talked about with K-State so far in Big 12 play. This is about the Cats and what they go out and do and how they play. If they play good defense like they've shown they're capable of, and really they did for the most part against Iowa State outside of the first I don't know, uh, probably the first 10 minutes of that game where it felt really bad. Um, you you can put yourself in a good spot if you're K-State. And then you would think, like you brought up the home crowd, that should elevate some guys to get back to playing better, and you probably get a little bit more from your bench because they're not in such a tough environment. Yeah, I'll also add with that Providence game, Oklahoma did have the benefit of playing Oklahoma at home instead of playing them at a neutral site or at Providence. 
So that and also that, that was like game number three of the season for K State too. It's not like uh, yeah, that was you know the none of those teams had really figured out how to how to play basketball together yet, especially with the way the transfers work now. So that I mean, so they got the that a benefit of that. Uh, it is interesting when you look at Oklahoma, especially shooting splits this season. I, I don't know if you've uh, looked uh, the shooting splits up, but especially from three. Oklahoma shooting significantly worse from three. And I'll, I'll call out Otega away as one of those guys where you look at his overall percentage from three and he's 17 of 32, which for a guard not to shoot that many threes is kind of wild in this day and age. But the efficiency is also great when he does shoot. And conference play, though, he's four of 14. So you wonder which one are you going to see when you play tomorrow night? Just like uh, even from the field, you look at Otego away and he's 54% overall. 30. And we lost Drew. He, uh, he just disappeared on us. So uh, we'll, we'll continue on, but yeah, he's talking about Otego away and kind of how things have played out for him and Oklahoma this season. He's a guy that, has taken a leap from last year as well. Uh, you look at what he's been able to do. He was a, a five-point per game scorer last year. He's up to 14. Uh, there are a couple of guys like that. I think fan compared Otega Owe to K-State's Cam Carter, basically, where these are yeah. guys that were on the team last year, but you basically have to account for them being totally different players. Yeah, like his shooting splits are in particular are insane. Uh, in conference play to the overall. Uh, Javion McCollum has been like the one real kind of consistent player for Oklahoma offensively. Uh, but the, even his numbers aren't like particularly crazy. He's 37% from the field as a guard. So you, you wonder how Oklahoma's offense will look against K-State's defense on the road. And it's a game where I think this is more about what K-State needs to do than Oklahoma, because I, I think that K-State, despite the metrics and everything, I, I would say K-State is probably the better team. Yeah, I, I, I think probably so. I, you know, we look at some of these other teams, and one of the things that's so scary about Iowa State, where it's not like Iowa State has just like overwhelming talent on their team. But they've got a really great collection of good players. Like they are pretty deep in terms of the amount of guys that can go out and do something for you. And you look at K State, they don't have that. We know that they have three guys that can go out and have big nights for you because those are the only three guys that have shown it this far. Oklahoma is kind of a team that is in that same boat where if you're looking at what they're going to go out and provide, they have two guys that are averaging double figures this year McCollum and Owe. And then you have some other guys that they might be able to go out and score it, but their traits and what they're good at doesn't align to going out and having like a, a dominant, you know, 18 to 20 point game that carries you offensively. They have a lot of guys that they have to be the number two. K-State goes into this game against Oklahoma. They have the advantage in guys that can step up and be a number one in your scoring and production in the game. And playing that at home, I think that's probably too much for Oklahoma. So I'm with you. I'm surprised that K-State um, is not – I mean, I get it because OU is is a Ken Palm darling this year, just like BYU. Um, I would about bet when the betting line comes out Tuesday morning, I would think K-State would be a favorite in this game. One and yeah. a half, two and a half points, it would feel like. Similar to, similar to Baylor, I would say. Uh, yeah. Where you know that Baylor, they ended up being closing as a favorite, like I think two and a half points. So I would say K State ends up being a favorite in this game because I think they should be. I think at home, and I think when they're playing their best, I think they're better than Oklahoma. Yeah, I, I think that, like you said, Oklahoma is just kind of like the the Ken Palm darling, which is interesting to see their difference in Ken Palm and Net, because you'd think that a team that would be pretty highly thought of by Ken Palm would be higher in net but they're only 35 so this is only a quad two game for k-state which is something to think about going forward uh but it is interesting like you look at oklahoma and just like their raw stats they they're good from the field but a lot of that was kind of 
padded by games that they played in the non-con where they just beat the crap out of teams. They they are a pretty good free throw shooting team. Yeah, if it gets down to that, 75% as a team, which is uh 44th in the country. But they they don't do like one thing, like you're like, holy crap, like if they did this tonight, like they are by far and away like the better team on the floor. They just kind of do a lot of things okay. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of plays out tomorrow night. Yeah, it'll be interesting to follow and see how it kind of goes down for them. And, I mean, you, you kind of look at Oklahoma. They can be a high turnover team, too, just like yeah. K-State. So, uh, And we know that K-State has the guys and the focus of what Jerome Tang wants to do is get out and be able to make teams pay when you give them transition opportunities. So let's close it out. MVPs of K-State's to win and the prediction for the game. Look, uh, I think in this game, it I feel like that this could be a good opportunity for Arthur Kaluma. He struggled at Houston, and you're going to need him. And if K-State continues with the lineup that we're accustomed to, accustomed to them seeing, he will have a size advantage in all likelihood on whoever is on him. And I just think this is a good bounce back opportunity and it's either got to be him or Cam Carter at this point. So I would take Kaluma and I do think K-State comes out on top of this one. I'll take the cats 73 to 64. Uh, well, I was going to take Arthur Kaluma, but to make everything. Well, you can still have him if you want him. Uh, no, I, uh, you know, you don't come, you, you don't come to the KSO YouTube to just hear the same thing. So I'll say Cam Carter. Uh, I think that this is a, a good matchup as well for Cam Carter where uh, he can really provide 15, 16, 17 points. And the the exciting thing about Cam Carter, at least in the last two games, is how efficient from the field he's been. I know he was 6 of 15 against Houston, but it felt like the missed shots really came when, when the game was like well out of hand. Yeah, he was good early on there when he – actually started to get looks uh, for the K-State offense. Yeah, he was efficient to start. When he started pressing, when the game got out of hand, his shots weren't falling as efficiently, but he's been pretty good for the floor in conference play. What does scare me, and it doesn't scare me as much against Oklahoma, but got to rein in the turnovers for both him and Kaluma. Because yeah, you can't have your two best players who need to touch the ball the most giving it away the most. Like, it would make sense if these guys had elevated turnover numbers from everybody else. The problem is, is that they are very elevated to the point where it's not just more usage. It's you're being bad with the basketball at times. And, and sometimes it just looks like it's just a lack of focus and they just dribble it off their foot or just dribble it into traffic. Uh, but you would like those two to be more or more effective with the ball. But I think this is going to be a big game for Cam Carter. And I'll say that K State wins 72 to 63. All right. So we're both taking the cats by nine. So all of you out there that want to cheat the system, just push the cats up to minus eight and a half uh, with which, whichever uh, app you use to place your wagers. And uh, we'll go from there. So we'll see how it plays out. Big one for the cats will not probably be a very good mood in Bramlage if K-State drops to 4-4 four and four in Big 12 play and 14-7. and seven. Really makes the next two games important. Road game at Oklahoma State and then back home on Big Monday next week against Kansas. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Head over to K-State Online for your full coverage of the Wildcats. Get previews of the Oklahoma game and also plenty of football recruiting news over there as well. So we're out of here. Thanks for watching K-State Online.